I am Jackie Robinson. Did you know I was the first black baseball player in the major leagues? I will tell you my early life, contributions, and later life. I was born in Cairo, Georgia on January 31st, 1919. I went to to college at UCLA and I was the first UCLA student to letter in for sports, baseball, football, basketball, and track in the same season. I married Rachel Isman in 1946. I'm famous for breaking the color barrier for baseball on April 15, 1947. I was the most valuable baseball player. I played for Brooklyn Dodgers for 10 years. I got 137 home runs in my career. I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, Baseball Hall of Fame on July 23rd, 1962. The first annual MLB Jackie Robinson Day was celebrated on April 15th, 2004. No one else was the number 42 in baseball. In later life, I coached at the YMCA. I marched with Martin Luther King Jr. in Washington, D.C. During the Civil Rights Movement, I died at 53 years old because of diabetes and heart problems. I am Jackie Robinson, and I should be remembered for my bravery. I said, I'm not concerned with your likings or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. My name is Elizabeth Blackwell. I was born in Bristol, England, England, on the date on the date February third, eighteen twenty one. Diana and Samuel Blackwell. I, yes, my mom and dad did have a, a British accent. My nickname was Basky. When I was eleven, I. I moved to America because my father's store got burnt down by accident. My friend Mary told me, Elizabeth, you are smart. You should become a doctor. That's what inspired me to become a doctor. I did not marry anyone, but I did, did adopt a, a little girl named Kitty Berry. I should be remembered because I am the first, I was the first woman doctor in America. I didn't win any awards, but, but there is a Elizabeth Blackwell Award. I help make, make people see women can can do more and be wonderful doctors. I made a clinic dedicated to me called the New York Infirmary. I retired life in New York and, and made it college for women. Life was peaceful at least for a while, and then the Civil War broke out. It was a war against slavery. And, and I was on the Union side, the one against slavery. I trained a lot of nurses. And and I, and the college I graduated is Nanda Harvard and William Smith Colleges. I was a doc because I was a doctor. No one would walk on the same side of the street as me. If society will not admit women's of women's free development, 
then society must be remodeled. I am Elizabeth Blackwell. I am Rachel Carson. Do you know what DDT is? It's a combo that, cold that hurts nature that I hope to get rid of. I am going to tell you about my early life, accomplishments, and later life. I was born in Springdale, Pennsylvania on May 17th, 1907. My parents were Marla and Robert. I was homeschooled and later went to Pennsylvania College for Women and got an advanced degree in zoology. In 1930, I began to write radio scripts and articles on sea life. I never married, but I did adopt my sister's grandson, Robert. I was famous for getting rid of pesticides and writing books on the sea. The Rachel Carson Award is the award that is given to American women for greatly helping the environment. Later in life, I wrote about pesticides while I had cancer for four years. I called the book Silent Spring and got rid of pesticides by giving, spe giving speeches. I died on April 14th, 1964. I was 57 when I died, and I died of breast cancer and a heart attack. I am Rachel Carson, and I should be remembered for getting rid of pesticides and writing about the sea. I am Sacagawea. I helped Lewis and Clark on their expedition from St. Louis all the way to the Pacific Ocean. If I did not come on the expedition, the Corpse of Discovery wouldn't have been able to make it through the journey. This is my story. I was born in the Western Rocky Mountains in 1789. I was a Native American. My tribe was called the Shoshone. I was the daughter of the chief. I did not go to high school or college because my tribe did not have schools. When I was 12 years old, I got captured by the Hadassah tribe. I was a part of their family then. When I was 14, I married to, to, to Senate Charbonneau and became one of his many wives. Lewis and Clark came and asked me to be one of their translators. At the time, I was pregnant. When the baby was two months old, Lewis and Clark set off with me, my baby, and husband. I was not considered a part of the team. I was the only woman on the expedition. I found edible plants to eat and was a symbol of peace. At the time, men traveled alone, so when different tribes saw me with my baby, they were surprised. I was able to speak to them and tell them about our journey and that we meant no harm. The corpse of discovery could not have survived without me. Lewis and Clark spell my name eight different ways. There came a time when we needed to get horses from the Shoshone, and we had to cross into their land. We had to talk with the chief. When I saw the chief, I noticed he was my brother. I wept. So did he. We were so happy to see each other. Soon it was time to continue our journey. We faced grizzly bears and were hit by hail. Our boat nearly capsized and we ate candles so that we did not starve. It was a crazy journey. I got to see the ocean for the first time and it was amazing. The Corpse of Discovery and I traveled over 2,000 miles. It took a year and a half and in the end, I was sad for the corpse of discovery to leave, but they had thousands of miles to go. My life after the expedition is somewhat unknown because my tribe did not write anything down the way Lewis and Clark did. They passed down information through storytelling. Many people believe I had another baby. That was a girl named Lizetta in 1812. Some people think I died that year at 25 years old. 
Because of my contributions, a large new part of America opened for people to live on. I was necessary, and Lewis and Clark depended on me. No woman had ever done what I had done. Today, there are statues of me around the U.S., and many schools are named after me. There are mountains and rivers called Sacagawea, and a coin that has my face on it. I am proud of what I accomplished because I was strong and brave. I am an influencer. I am Sacagawea. I'm Mama Rudolph. Did you know I won three gold medals? I'm going to tell you about my early life contributions and my later life. I was born in Clarksville, Tennessee on June 23rd, 1940. My parents' names are Ed Rudolph and Blanche Rudolph. I was one out of 22 children. When I was six, I got polio, which meant I could not walk, so I had to wear a leg brace. One day, when I went to church, I took off my leg brace and walked into the church to my seat with my family. I went to Burt High School and Tennessee State University. In 1963, I married Robert Eldridge. I am famous because when I was little, I had polio, but I worked through it and became the fastest woman in the world. I also won three gold medals at the Olympics and inspired people to keep going and never give up. June 23rd is Wilma Rudolph Day in Tennessee to honor my accomplishments. In my later life, I retired from running and started to travel across the United States accepting coaching positions at different schools and giving motivational speeches to students about working hard to reach their goals. In, in 1967, I was invited by the Vice President Herbert Humphrey to participate in an athletic outreach program called Operation Champ. I died November 12, 1994, and I died from a brain tumor at age 54. I should be remembered for being the best athlete, never giving up, and inspiring people to never give up. I am on my way off. Did you know I was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean? The day I flew across the Atlantic was June 18, 1928. I was born in Atchison, Kansas. My parents' names were Edwin and Amelia Otis Earhart. I went to Hyde Park High School and Oregon School. Later, I became a Nashville veteran. I made many contributions to the United States. I made history by flying first solo flight from Hawaii to California in 1935. I was known for encouraging women to break female social norms and pursue to opportunities in the male field, such as aviation. I also founded an all-female pilot organization called 99s. In 1937, I set out to fly around the world with Fred Noonan. However, late in the journey, I radioed that the plane was running out of fuel. The plane was declared lost at sea on July 19th. I was, the, I was 39 years old when I died. I was one of the greatest women of American history. I followed my passion first by becoming a nurse and then a pilot. I was the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean and also had a desire to fly across the world. I'm important to opening up a male-dominated career for women. Uh -huh. Hi, I am Betsy Ross. My real name is Elizabeth. I was alive during the Revolutionary War, and I saw the first American flag. I'm going to tell you about my early life contributions and later life. I was born on January 1st in 1752 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My parents are Samuel and Rebecca Grissom. I, I had 10 sisters and 7 brothers. I stopped going to school when I was 12 years old. I married three times. First, John Ross. Then, Joseph Baskin. And last, Tony Cole. I served the American flag in 1776. 
I had my own business. Then I had my own business. After I made the flag, my business got bigger and I earned more money for food and materials because all the naval ships needed with flags as they'd be on duty. I set to work doing my part for the war by making lots of flags. I am famous because I made the American flag and I helped sick and hurt soldiers in the Revolutionary War. Here is a story of when I made the flag. Three men came to my shop asking if I could make a flag. One of the men was George Washington, another was George Ross, and, the, and John's uncle, last and last John, Robert Morris. They asked me if I could design a flag. I said yes. In my later life, I told stories to my grandkids. In 1836, I died in my bed. In 1817, my third husband died. I am Betsy Ross, and I should be remembered for making the first American flag. When I was born, I was given the name of Slow. I am known as one of the most famous Native Americans. I was brave and kind. I will tell you about my early life, my later life, and my contributions. I was born in the spring of 1831 in the Dakota Tor Territory. My parents' names are Her Holly Door and Jumping Bull. When I was 10, I killed my first buffalo with two arrows. After that, I became a Lakota warrior. I married Light Hair in 1851. When I was 38, I became a war chief. I fought for my people. I tried to make equality for Indians. I am most famous for fighting in the Battle of Little Bighorn where my people defeated George Custer. In 1885, I joined the Wild West Show for four months. I sold my autograph at the show. When I was 59, I was killed at dawn by Catch the Bear. I should be remembered for my bravery. I am Tatanka Iota, or better known as Sitting Bull. Did you know that my uncle was President Theodore Roosevelt? I'm going to tell you about my early life, contributions, and later life. I was born in New York City in 1884 on October 11th. My parents were Elliot and Anne Roosevelt. Since I was born into a wealthy family, I learned to read and write at home. When I was eight, my mother died. Since my dad had drinking problems, I had to live with my grandparents. Then when I was 10, my father died from his drinking problems. When I was 15, I went to Allenswood High School in London. After three years at Allenswood, my grandmother decided it was time for my coming out party. A coming out party is a season of balls and parties for rich women to find a husband. I got married to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We were married on St. Patrick's Day. I was the first First Lady to give speeches. I made the country a better place because I worked to make factories safer and I helped in World War II. I sent letters to soldiers' families. I also helped during the Great Depression. I would send letters and give money to people in need. In my later life, I wrote two books called You Learn My Living and On My Own. President Truman wanted me to, to represent the United States at the United Nations, and I said yes. I also traveled all around the world and met with important leaders. People started to call me everywhere, Eleanor. I died on November 7, 1962. I died of old age. I'm Eleanor Roosevelt, and I should be remembered for helping people in need. You must do what you think you cannot do. I am Mae Jamison. I was the first African-American woman to go to space. 
I made the world a better place by opening up more opportunities for black women. I'm going to tell you about my early life, contributions, and later life. I was born in Decatur, Alabama on October 17, 1956. My parents' names are Charlie and Dorothy. I was a cheerleader in high school. I went to Stanford University to study chemical engineering. I never got married. I went to medical school at Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. I'm famous because I was the first African-American woman in space. I opened up more opportunities for black women. I also went to Africa to learn about African history and to help people in Africa with medicine. Today I give speeches. I also was a science teacher. I started the Dorothy Jennison Foundation to inspire little girls to follow their dreams. I wrote a book about my life. I am Mae Jemison and I should be remembered for being the first African American woman astronaut. I am Neil Armstrong. Did you know I learned to fly a plane before I learned to drive? I'm going to tell you about my early life, accomplishments, and later life. I was born August 5th, 1930 in Ohio. My parents' names were Viola Armstrong and Louis Armstrong. I watched my first airplane race when I was three years old. When I was eight years old, I mopped the the museum floor and mowed the graveyard for 10 cents an hour. When I was 15 years old, I saved up to get airplane lessons. I was famous for being the first person to step on the moon. I won an air medal, two gold stars, comma, Korean service medal, and a medal of freedom. I made airplanes that had 20 to 30 people. I have a museum all about me. I even help people dream to try new things and believe in themselves. I worked at NASA for a long time. Then I became a teacher in Ohio. I died on August 25th, 2012 from heart failure at age 82. I am Neil Armstrong and I should be remembered for being the first person to step on the moon. Did you know that I discovered E equals MC squared? Square? It stands for energy e equals mass times the speed of light squared. This means matter and energy are different forms of the same thing. I'm going to tell you about my early life contributions and later life. I was born on March 14, 1879 in in Ulm, Germany. My parents' names were Herman and Pauline. When I was in college, I dropped out of school. Later, I was married to Elsa and worked at the patent office. Did you know that I loved a compass my dad gave me when I was five? I studied magnetic forces because of it. I was a famous scientist. I won the Nobel Prize for Physics, which is a branch of science that studies matter, motion, energy, and forces. My books are Why War, Relativity, Special Theory of Relativity, and many, many more. I wanted the Second World War to end. I was worried Germany would create an atom bomb, so I wrote a letter to President Roosevelt. I was upset that the USA created a bomb of their own. I studied science until I died. My bed was covered in notes and questions about questions I hadn't answered yet. When I died, my last words were in German and nobody in the room knew what I was saying. I died April 18th, 1955 of old age at 76 years old. I was friends with Marie Curie. Fun fact, many people th think I created the atom bomb. I am Albert Einstein. I am Oliver Light and I invented the airplane. Did you know my fastest flight was in a military flyer? It flew 54 miles an hour. It was made from sticks and wood and pieces of cloth. I'm going to tell you about my early life, contributions, and later life. 
I was born in Dayton, Ohio on August 17, 1871. My parents' names were Milton and Susan Wright. My brother's name was Wilbert. I dropped out of high school. My first job was a printing business, but when safety bikes were invented, I started fixing bikes. I am famous because I invented the airplane. I made the United States a better place because I invented the airplane to make travel easier. Something made to honor me is the right for the U.S. Memorial in North Carolina. I inspired people to invent new things. In later life, I opened a laboratory and invented a racing airplane and other stuff. I lived to be 78 years old but died in 1948 of a heart attack. I am also right and I should be remembered because I invented the airplane to make travel easier. And one of my famous quotes is, Rights are generally looked upon as an impossibility and scarcely anyone believes in it until he has actually seen it with his own eyes. Hello, I am Benjamin Franklin. Did you know I helped sign the Declaration of Independence? even though I didn't go to school. I am going to tell you about my early life, my contributions, and my later life. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts on January 17, 1706. My dad's name was Josiah. I did not go to school because at my time there was no school. I loved to swim and fly kites. At 10 years old, I got my first job working for my dad making candles and soap. I did not like me making candles and so so I help so I went to work for my brother making newspapers. I tricked my brother to become an author. The, there was one thing I liked most reading book. Anytime I had extra money I'd use it to buy books. I married to a woman named Deborah. I had many accomplishments in my life. I helped make the first library in the United States. I I also helped sign the Declaration of Independence as part of the Second Continental Congress. I I printed the second the Pennsylvania Gazette and other newspapers. One of my best papers was Poor Richard's Almanac. I made special I made I also made the lightning rod and trap lightning in a jar and made special glasses that made people see close up and far away. I am Benjamin Franklin. I am remembered for being a printer, a writer, inventor, a scientist, a scholar, and a founding father. Tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. Did you know I was one of the first black kids to go to an all-white school? I'm going to tell you about my early life contributions and later life. I was born in Tylertown, Mississippi on September 8, 1954. My parents' names are Lucille Bridges and Aborn Bridges. I moved from Tylertown, Mississippi to New Orleans, Louisiana when I was four years old. I went to Wilma Franz Elementary School. I went to an integrated high school. I did not go to college. I married Malcolm Hall. I'm famous because I went to an all-white school and I am black. I was six. I set up the Ruby Bridges Foundation. My full name is Ruby Nell Bridges. I wrote a book about my life, then I had four sons. I'm still alive today. I will be 67 in September. My quote is, don't follow the path, go where there is no path, begin the trail. I am Ruby Bridges and I will be remembered for going to an all-white school when I was six. I began the show of peace between black and white people. Thank you for listening to my class speeches. I am Laura Ingalls Wilder. I went to school when I was 10. I will tell you about my early life contributions and later life. 
I was born in Wisconsin on February 7th, 1867. My parents' names are Charles and Caroline. One important fact is that I first went to school when I was 10. I was married to Almanzo. I had a second grade teacher, a teacher certificate and taught a few years. I am famous for being the best author of my time about my childhood. I made the United States a better place by writing books for kids to read. I have the, I have the Children's Le Literature Legacy Award and the John Newberry Medal. Some books I wrote that you can enjoy are Farmer Boy, Little House in the Big Woods, and Little House on the Prairie. I wrote one book besides the Little House books. I died on February 10th, 1957 in my sleep at age 92. I am Laura Ingalls Wilder and I should be remembered for writing good books. I said, write what you look up to and look up to what, look up to what you think is best. Did you know I was considered the greatest American architect of all time? Did you also know I was the father of prairie style houses? I was born Frank Lincoln Wright in Richland Center, Wisconsin on June 8th, 1867. My parents' names were Anna Lloyd Jones and William Carey Wright. I went to the University of Wisconsin, Madison and changed my middle name to Lloyd. I am famous because I designed houses that were not European style. I also designed the Imperial Hotel in Japan, which survived the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923. I was named the greatest American architect of all time by the American Institute of Architects. I designed the Salmon R. Guggenheim Museum when I was 84, but died six months before it was fully built. I was 92 when I died in my sleep on April 9, 1959. I am Frank. Lloyd Wright and I should be remembered for designing houses that were not European style. I said, no house should ever be on a hill or on anything. It should be of the hill belonging to it. Hill and house should live together, each the happier for the other. I am Frank Lloyd Wright. Did you know that I was named Illinois' most famous son? I will tell you more interesting facts about myself in the speech. I was born in Lerue County, Kentucky on February 12, 1809. My parents' names are Thomas Lincoln and Nancy Hanks Lincoln. Mary Todd was my wife. I had 14 jobs and I also wrestled, but I didn't have it as a job. Although I was very good at it, I attended a blob school, a school with no bigs for students. I won the Civil War and ended slavery in America. There is a university named Lincoln University and a monument in Washington, D.C. There are also lots of school roads, even cities named after me. I was also awarded a gold medal by the Union League for Philadelphia in 1863 for keeping the nation united through the Civil War. I gave a famous speech called the Gettysburg Address to honor those who died in the Civil War. I was President of the United States of America to the end of my life. I was shot at age 56 on April 15, 1865. My name is Abraham Lincoln. I was the 16th president of the United States of America. Many people are inspired by my hard work and achievements. Martin. Did you know I was known as the Angel of the Battlefield? I'm going to tell you about my early life, contributions, and my later life. I was born in Oxford, Massachusetts on December 25, 1821. My parents were Sarah Barton and Stephen Barton.
When I was little, my father was in the army. He would tell me stories of things that happened. When I heard this, I was so inspired about this that I thought maybe I could be a nurse. I was born in a family of seven people, including me. My siblings are all older than me. My brothers' names are David and Stefan. My two sisters are Dolly and Sarah. It's like having six parents instead of two. I became a civil war nurse. I didn't just help the Union. I also helped the Confederate soldiers. I am famous because I started the American Red Cross. I saved a lot of soldiers. I received the German Iron Cross and the Cross of Emperor Russia because I healed soldiers by their land. In Washington, D.C., there's a street named after me. And this is all because I was a very famous nurse. I am famous because I created the American Red Cross. I was known as the Angel of the Battlefield and the Spirit of the Red Cross. I started an organization and wrote books. I died on April 12, 1912, when I was 91 years old. Nurses and doctors still think about me today. I am Clara Barton, and I should be remembered because I started the American Red Cross. I may be compelled to face danger, but never fear it. And while our soldiers can fight, I can stand and feed and nurse them. It's kind of fun to do the impossible. Hello, I am Walt Disney and I was a famous animator. You might have seen some of my movies. I was born in Marceline, Missouri, December 5th, 1901. My parents are Elias and Flora Disney. Snow White was my first full length film. I always loved being the class clown. One day I caught a field mouse and made a yarn leash for it. At nine years old, I, I became a mailman to help my family with money. One day, I, I, I found black tar and pinned it on the side of my house. The black tar was not washable. I am famous for creating such famous movies as Pinocchio, Snow White, and the Seven Dwarves, Peter Pan, Bambi, and more. I earned the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award, and I also created Mickey Mouse. I was always an animator. I sometimes went to Disneyland. I won 22 Academy Awards. I, I should be remembered for creating such, such famous TV shows such as, as Mickey Mouse and a lot more. Steamboat Willie was the first Mickey Mouse TV show. Oh, I died of lung cancer in 1966 at 65 years old.